So we know the way enzymes work. Enzymes essentially take their substrate, then that substrate binds to the enzyme's active site. So then once the substrate has bounded to the enzyme's active site, then it can be converted into its product. And we know that's what enzymes do. Enzymes catalyze these chemical reactions, taking these substrates and converting them into their products. However, it's important to realize there are three major types of inhibitors that you need to be aware of for the MCAT. And each of these inhibitors inhibit this enzyme from, from catalyzing their chemical reactions. So these are the three major types of inhibitors you need to be aware of for the MCAT. And they each inhibit these enzymes through different techniques. So first, let's talk about these competitive inhibitors. So again, we know the way these enzymes work. They take their substrates, these substrates bind to the enzyme, and then they get converted into their products. So normally this is the way these enzymes work, and normally this is the way these line weaver burr plots look. However, if we add this competitive inhibitor, it essentially shifts the line weaver burr plot to look like this, where the Vmax stays the same, however the KM increases. So how do these competitive inhibitors work, and how do they inhibit these enzymes? Well, the point is, is that these competitive inhibitors bind to the enzyme's active site. And now once they bind to the enzyme active site, now this enzyme can't function because this, this competitive inhibitor is just clogging up this active site. So now even if we have this substrate around, it can't bind to the active site because we have this competitive inhibitor blocking it up. But it's important to realize eventually this competitive inhibitor will bind off. And then once it binds off, now the substrate can bind to the active site and get converted into product. So it's important to realize that these competitive inhibitors reversibly bind and then they, they bind off. But while the competitive inhibitor has bounded, this enzyme can't function. But then it will bind off and now we can go through this chemical reaction. And now we can see why these competitive inhibitors are referred to as competitive inhibitors. Because we see they competitively bind for the active site. This substrate and the competitive inhibitor, they both bind to the active site, so they compete to bind to the active site. But we know when the competitive inhibitor binds to the active site, it inhibits the enzyme. So that's, hence, that's why it's an inhibitor. So that's the way these competitive inhibitors work. But we also have these non-competitive inhibitors. So we know normally the way these enzymes work is, again, they take their substrate and convert it into product. And normally this is the way the line weaver burr plot looks. However, if we throw in some of this non-competitive inhibitor, it shifts the line weaver burr plot to look like this, where the Vmax decreases, but the KM stays the same. So how do these non-competitive inhibitors work? Well, these non-competitive inhibitors bind to an allosteric site. They bind to an allosteric site. And once these non-competitive inhibitors bind to this allosteric site, once they bind to the allosteric site, the enzyme goes through a conformational change. And now once the enzyme goes through a conformational change, this active site is blocked. And now once this active site is blocked, essentially this enzyme is out of commission and it can't function. Because this active site is blocked, so now the substrate can't bind. But it's important to realize this is a reversible process where the non-competitive inhibitor will eventually bind off. And once it binds off, now the active site is exposed where the substrate can bind, again, converted into its product. So again, that's the way these non-competitive inhibitors work. And we can see why they're called non-competitive inhibitors because they do not compete for the active site. They don't both compete to bind to the active site. It binds to an, an allosteric site and so therefore it can bind un competitively and it can bind without any impact and essentially once it binds to the allosteric site, now it's blocked. So that's why it's called a non-competitive inhibitor because it's not competing to bind for the active site compared to with the substrate. So that's how these non-competitive inhibitors work. So what about these uncompetitive inhibitors? Well, again, we know normally the way these enzymes work is they take their substrate, convert it into product, and normally this is the way the line weaver burr plot work, looks. However, if we add this uncompetitive inhibitor, it shifts the line weaver burr plot to look like this, where both the Vmax and the CAM decreases. So how do these uncompetitive inhibitors work? 
Well, these are a little different, where first the substrate must bind the enzyme. So first the substrate has to bind the enzyme, and once the substrate binds to the enzyme, then the enzyme goes through a conformational change, and once the substrate binds, and only once the substrate has bounded to the enzyme, does it go through the conformational change necessary to allow the uncompetitive inhibitor to bind. So now the uncompetitive inhibitor binds to an allosteric site, and once it binds to this allosteric site, the enzyme goes through another conformational change that locks up this substrate. So now the substrate is locked up and, and stuck to the enzyme, to the, this enzyme active site. So once this uncompetitive inhibitor binds, essentially this enzyme is out of commission and it can't function. But again, just like all the other inhibitors, eventually this uncompetitive inhibitor will bind off so once it binds off, now the enzyme goes back to its conformation where now the substrate can be converted into its product. So therefore, that's the way these uncompetitive inhibitors work. So they're a little unique. First, the substrate must bind to the enzyme and then and only then can the uncompetitive inhibitor bind and, and cause the enzyme to go through a conformational change where it's out of commission and it's not functioning. So we see there are these three major types of inhibitors that you need to be aware of for the MCAT. And we see each inhibitor has its own unique impact on these line weaver Burke plots. And if you're interested in the link below, I have a video that goes into detail why these inhibitors have these kind of impacts on these VMAX and KM. Why the non-competitive inhibitor decreases the VMAX, but the KM stays the same and et cetera. So I have a link of that video below. But also there are these mixed inhibitors. So essentially the way these mixed inhibitors work is they can either bind to the naked enzyme or they can bind to the enzyme substrate complex. So again, depending on which type it binds to determines how it impacts these line weaver Burke plots. But again, these are the major, these are the major types of inhibitors you need to be aware of for the MCAT.